Hi there. My name is E.J. Daigle. I'm the Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing here at Dunwoody College of Technology. And today I'm going to do a little demo on the Epson T3 robot um, and specifically the Epson RC Plus software. Um, in a different video, you'll see me take this, this particular program that I write and simulate. I'll take it to the actual robot lab and we'll actually run it on the robot. That's one of the the great things about this software is you have the ability to program offline, simulate the movements offline, and then actually go to a robot and use that code on the robot controller to see how your code would run. Uh, it gives you a great way to both learn the software, but in the real world, you could actually be doing some real world programming, uh, assuming you knew kind of what you needed to do and what points you needed to hit and things. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, uh, if you were going to start a new program, I'd go into the Epson RC Plus software. I'd go to Project New. And in here, there are a couple nice templates. You have to put a new project name in here, uh, the pick and place one to one, uh, pick and place uh, one to palette, and pick and place palette to one. I did the pick and place one to one. And then I actually had my own little sample code down here that I'm using. And you're more than welcome uh, to copy this code ahead and use this and, and try this and see how it works. Let me, I mean, there's very few lines of code here. So I wanted to start out with something really, really basic. Give everybody an idea how this works. Uh, typically, I start off all my code with uh, some commented out sections here. So it's an Epson T3 robot demo, offline programming example, uh, my name, my position here at Dunwoody, uh, the college, and then the date today, which is 1022 of 18. All right, when I first start programming here, I really have two functions that I'm going to I have the main function, and I have what's called the init robot function. Um, so when I jump into this main function as I'm executing my code, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to say, OK, I'm going to jump out and go to this sub function called init robot. When I get to init robot, you're going to see um, I'm going to reset the motors, turn them off, turn them back on again, uh, ensure that they're in the right position. Um, I'm also going to uh, set the power to high or low the speed to whatever speed I want, and the acceleration. And these are probably some of the most important lines here. I'll tell you on the, the power side, high power is gonna be full speed, maximum force. Low power, so I could change this word from high to low, and what that would mean is I'm running at no more than 250 millimeters per second at 100%, but my servos would also be running at um, the, the lowest level of collision detection. So if I was to run into something, that this low power is actually the safest mode to be in. And you can even set your speed um, to lower speeds and you know your power to low, and now this thing's going to move very slow. And if it runs into somebody, um, it's going to stop very quickly. For safety purposes in the lab, um, my recommendation is to run on low power, run at 50. But my other recommendation for students is we don't actually let the students have their hands near the robot as it's, ac as it's actually running the code. Um, unlike a uh, you know, six-axis articulated FANUC robot or something where I might have a dead man switch and I'm holding a teach pendant as it operates, um, these robots will continue to run, especially in the code here where I'm looping the code over and over again. Um, so what we do is we have the students uh, step away from the robot and we have an e-stop off to the side of the robot and they're, they're required to have their hands on the e-stop as the robot is executing its code. So that's kind of what's happening in this init robot function. When it's done with that, it's going to function end, which means it's going to go back up to the last point that called it, and I'm going to enter this do while loop. This do while loop is extremely simple. When I enter the do while loop, I have a 0.1 second wait, and then I'm going to go to 0 0.0. 0 0.1 second wait, and then I'm going to go to 0 0.1, and then I'm going to loop and go over and over and over again. So that's, that's the basics of, of the code that we're going to operate today. Now let's go ahead and create some of these points so, so we can see what's going to happen. So first of all, if you go up to the top here, current controller connection, if I was talking to the robot, if I was putting this code onto the robot controller itself, I would select USB and I would actually be deploying the code to the robot and running the code on the physical robot. If I'm going to run this code in an offline environment, I'm actually going to use the CAD to print or CAD to point, excuse me, a CAD point actually allows me to simulate what this robot's gonna do. Now let's see what that looks like. If you mouse across the top up here, you'll see that there's an actual button here called simulate. Oh, there we go, I had to get out of there for a second. So simulator, 
if I click on the simulator, you'll see a picture of my robot right here. And I can kind of, you know, pretty easily, I can kind of move this robot around, look at it from different angles or different views if I want to. Um, I'm going to just kind of look at it from this view right here. And we'll do some movements with this robot. All right, so now if you look over at your Project Explorer over here, you've got your main code and you've got your robot points. You'll notice that none of my current robot points have any labels. They don't have any XYZ positions or anything like that. If I go back into my simulator and I wanted to program in a point, what I would do is I'd actually grab the, the robot jog. On the physical robot, I would actually free up the axes and I would physically move that robot or I could do it through the teach pendant. Um, in this particular case, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this robot jog. And just like in real life, what it's going to allow me to do is kind of mouse over these joints. And I'm going to go ahead and mouse this joint over. And maybe I'll turn this a little bit so I can see where it's going. All right. And as I mouse that joint over, I can kind of see where I'm at now with the physical robot. And now if I want to call that point zero, let's say, I would click on the teach here. And when I do that, it gives me the X, Y, Z position the U position, so X being kind of, um, X, Y, Z being your coordinate space and U being the rotation of your end of arm tool. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and teach this as point zero. So, so you sure? Yep, I'm sure. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and I'm gonna grab this, this uh, Z axis or joint four. I'm gonna move it down. I'm gonna teach that. And that'll be called point one. Yes. And then I'm going to go back in and hit this again. I'm going to move this up again. Oops. There we go. And I'll teach that, and that'll be point two. So now basically what I have is I have the robot in this position, brings the end of arm tool down, brings the end of arm tool back up again. What if I was going over to a bin, let's say. Let's say I just picked up a part and I was placing it on a circuit board. Maybe now I would slide this guy over here and I teach another point. Point three. Yep. And now I go to jog again. I'm going to grab J4 again. Maybe I'm placing that part on the circuit board. And we'll call that point four. Yes. And then I'll go ahead and jog up again and move this up. And we can see that this will be, I think it's point five, right? And so now I have five points taught. Now, if I go back into my main program here real quick, what you'll see is I only actually have the two points in the code. So I'm gonna copy this, hit enter, hit paste, paste, and now we've got a bunch of room to put additional points. So point zero, point one, point two, point three, and I don't remember if there was four, five, or six. 0 0.4, 0 0.5. The good news is, let's say I don't remember how many points I did. I can go right down here and under robot points, open this up, can open up robot one, and here's my robot points. I can see that I used five points. Now there's going to be one disparity here. I don't have a label on my current points. So what I'd want to do is main code. I called it PT0, PT1, PT2, PT3, PT4, and PT5. So on my robot points, I want to do the same thing. I'm going to call this PT. 0, PT1, PT2, PT3, PT4, and PT5. You'll notice I get a lot of information here. I can tell when my z-axis is up, when my z-axis is down. I can tell if I'm operating in a left-handed orientation or a right-handed orientation. All of that is up here for me to see. Um, and I can see I've got 0.0 through 0.5, and here I'm going to call 0.0 through 0.5. Now, some people might say, well, you know, maybe I need a wait at, him, at the end here. Well, I really don't need a wait because think of what's going to happen here. This loop is going to loop me back up to this wait. So unless I wanted an additional wait or something, maybe I want to wait, uh, I don't know, let's say 0.8 or something like that. I want to have an, a, a wait in between so I can see when it got to the end of the program and then bounce back up. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll go back into my simulator mode. And this is a great time for us to kind of simulate and watch what's going to happen. Um, so in order to do that, I have to be in the simulator mode. But in order to get there, I have to go to my run icon here in my run window. 
That's going to open up a new window where I'm going to hit start. It's asked me, do you want to start your main function? I do. Uh, got speed factor, low power. I can I can reselect these right now if I want to as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And you're like, yep, I want to start. And you're like, well, what just happened? Well, I know it's running because I can actually see the stop button stops all tasks, but I don't see anything. Well, that's because I got to go back to my simulator screen. And now you can actually see, maybe I'm picking up the part from one location and placing it in another location, picking up from another location and placing it. Now, when we get there, we should see a, yeah, there's the 0 0.8 pause. So you can see between the points, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and you'll see the long pause. Kind of when it gets back up into this area, you'll see that almost a full second pause there before it moves on. So we can see we've executed everything. And these little green dots really give you the idea of you know where you are in space and what you're actually doing. The ability to kind of move around in your view, it's kind of like a CAD software. You gotta get kind of used to both rotating and zooming in and zooming out and so on and so forth. So let's stop it. And let's say we wanted to add, you know, just one more thing. Let's say there was a, oh crud, I really wanna, you know, once I get done, I wanna, uh, you know, pause at a different point. Maybe that, uh, that, that point that we went up to here is, is in a different location or something like that. It'd be very easy to adjust the location of a point by simply going into your jog menu, grabbing the end of arm tool, you know, and maybe I wanna maybe I want this to go down a little bit for some reason. I don't know why I would do this, but if I did, maybe I want to go to the center point right here. I could then teach that point in there. Maybe that's kind of like a home position. It's point six. So now I've got P6, and you can see how quick and easy I edited this code. i got to make sure I give that its correct name there and go back to the main code. Now, I'm not currently calling point 6, so I might need to go in here and go to PT6. Maybe I'll do a wait of 2 seconds. So I've got instead of the wait of point 0.8 here, I'm going to do point 0.1, go to point 6, and wait 2 seconds and be ready. So now we'll go back to the simulation. I'll go to run. I'll go to the run window, and from here I can start it again. Yep, we'll start her up, go to my simulation mode, and now we can see exactly what's going to happen. It's going to sit there for two seconds and then go back to its normal routine. Boom, 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 two seconds here. So I hope what this has done for you guys as, as you're watching this video is it's given you an example of how simple and easy it is to actually program offline and the huge benefit of the RC Plus software is I can test and debug. And for my purposes with students, um, we can put this on all the student computers and they can learn about programming. I can even assign them homework to go home and write computer or pro robot code. And then the next day they can come in and, uh, and test it on the live robot. Um, so there's a lot less debugging on the robot or learning of the code on the robot because you can learn it offline and then come in and even if you have, like in our case, we only have four of the Epson Scar robots. Um, even in our case, then, uh, they can still be working on the robot programming, even though they're not physically in front of a robot. And when they get into the lab with the robot, they can actually do it with the end of our tool and different parts and, and see their code run. So again, I want to thank you for watching this video. My next video will be to take this exact same code and bring it into the lab and show you how that runs on the robot and show you some physical teaching by physically moving the robot around because uh, it's really not that much different than what we did in the simulation software. Thank you.